Yo, my whole life. Look, I'm 6'6". Six, six, and okay? I know all you're 6'6". Right, six, right. six, because I hate So you people. look like you're sitting in a uh, hole right now. Oh, uh, <laughs> please don't make me go. I have to have PTSD. Yeah. And it was always you guys that looked oh. down on me and took all my girls from me. I would never do that to you. you, you are not at this no, point I'm happily right now. married and, and satisfied. This is not this type of show. <laughs> Fifty percent more meat, extra portions that taste extra good. <laughs> 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 Today, we have, I consider two legends. One of the legends said they had to introduce themselves to me. It's like, I don't assume. But <laughs> me being a person with gray hair and an old person, you don't have to assume when you're standing next to one of the best defensive ends in the history of the Red. Uh, uh, in the history of the football. Uh, in the history, what's the name of the goddamn team? The Commanders. <laughs> OK, the, the Commanders. commanders. <laughs> the Commanders. But to my right, Charles Mann is with us this uh, afternoon, or whatever time of time's on UN. And another uh, uh, Washington Redskins legend. Uh, Commander's legend. God damn it! Keep correcting me, <laughs> Mr. Brian Mitchell. How you guys doing? We're good, man. How you doing? All right. So I've been here. I was here early. We got a chance to ch chat it mm -hmm. up. You kind of know what I do for a living. Oh, yeah. Charles has no idea what I do. In fact, I think he thought I was Idris Elba when I sat down. <laughs> uh, a little shorter than Idris. <laughs> All right. Can we not dismiss <laughs> Yeah, let's get with it. Right, since, okay. Since you're married now, when you, when uh, uh, the, uh, Formal team formerly known as a skin. Were you married at that time? Yes. Were you happily, that's a double question, were you happily married at that time? Well, I'm married to the same person, so yes. Here's another question for you. For someone, because being popular, mm -hmm. having the money mm -hmm. at the prime, with most guys, especially today, they out there, they partying, they turning up. What made you decide that I don't care about anything, any of that, I want to settle down and be with this woman for the rest of my life. I had no idea. When I when I came to the Washington football team, I'm going to say that you right now. You seemed so stressed when you said when that. I, <laughs> when I came to this team in 1983, I, you know, I walked into that locker room, and it was very familiar to me. There was those scratch and sniff guys. Okay, for the people that don't know, what's the definition of a scratch and sniff? guy that I was, you know, uh -huh. bad mouth, uh, you know, don't look you in your eye when you're talking to him, and, you know, just a regular guy, you know, yeah. scratch and sniff guy. Yeah. And then there was this kind of touchy-feely, nice, personable kind of a guy, uh, Art Monk, uh, Monty Coleman, Mel Kaufman, mm -hmm. Ken Coffey, and they seemed to be more sincere. And I, so I walked in that locker room and I said, hey, Know those guys, scratch and sniff. Don't know these guys. I'm 3,000 miles away. I'm from Sacramento, California. I can hang with anybody I want to hang with. I'm going to start hanging with these guys. But you know, what he's talking about, I get here in 97 years after Yeah. Me, and you instantly realize, you know, I, I was a quarterback of my football team in college, and I was the lead renegade. And he ended up playing quarterback <laughs> in the game. Yeah. I know, I remember I was the lead renegade. <laughs> when I got there, I noticed that this group was more about they had fun, but you know what? It was a family-oriented thing, and they're going to work. Right. Yeah. You know, and what happened, yeah. Coach Gibbs, you know, Coach gets a lot of credit. He, he, get, he deserves that credit because he allowed the guys to run the team. Yeah. But if you screwed up, in the locker room, you got checked. By him? Yeah. By them. Uh, uh, by uh, the uh, team. Uh, uh, <laughs> now, let me say this. He said he came in 90. He came in 90, and in 91, he was inflicting all of his will on it. <laughs> so it wasn't just Gary Clark getting up in your face, jamming you up. It was Brian Mitchell. And these are little guys. Why you got to keep saying little guys, man? Well, I'm 6'6", six, six, so everybody... All right, we know you're 6'6". Six, six. I stood up. I saw that you're 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> you don't have to keep being disrespectful I'm not, like that. I'm not as big and bad anymore, okay? Right. So okay. maybe I'll say they were... Normal size vertically, guys, vertically challenged. challenged. No, yeah. they weren't challenged. Yeah. They, they, I wouldn't say Brian was challenged in anything. <laughs> Brian would challenge you. And so a little bit different. I will tell you that because I, I think when you back then I was probably in high school, or whatever. And I and I and I really okay. did look up to way to all age you guys, me. Right? Way to age me. Go no, ahead. I'm just saying me. Well, you're right. They do it to me all What's the time. What's that age? Huh? We're not going to talk about that. Yeah. I'm, I'm still in the acting field. You got to go to my Facebook page and went to school I with somebody that. to know how old I am. So you still putting mascara and stuff? No, I don't do that. Look, look. So I, I already you. saw how old he is. I know. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you, every time, anyway. like, every time the ball was kicked in your direction, it's me. I, what, you 5'9"? 5'8"? 5'10 and a half. 
Come on, man. Find it. Okay, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but on the field, this is how you looked on compared the field, to right? Them? Yeah, well. yeah, compared to you. But everything, every time you caught the ball, man, it felt like you was represented for all the short. Well, you don't want to consider yourself short. I'm short. For I'm all good. the short guys, I was always excited when you got the ball. I always, always was excited to to watch you play, man. And I and I know and I'm not no disrespect to where the team is now, but there was something special about that era mm. of football where where the team was always competitive. They had mm -hmm. the ups and the downs. But another thing about this show is about we like what like how was it being in the locker room? Okay, you guys win a game, especially mm. a game that everybody counted you out, right? Mm. For me, when I go when I do a show, I'm a stand up comic, mm -hmm. I get motivated by music, right? Mm -hmm. okay. What type of music were you guys listening to? in the locker room, like before a game and then after a game with a victory? Before a game, to be totally honest with you, I listened to like R&B and college stuff because for me, I didn't want to get worked up. I had a coach in college tell me, don't play the game before the game. Right? <laughs> and I remember listening to rap music and I get hyped and I get in the game and I'm tired around the third, fourth quarter. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I would listen to the easy going stuff and then at the end of the game, I turned it up. Yeah. Even if you lost? I would think you, you, you get over it. You know what? I'm going to be honest. My first preseason game, we lost, and I'm crying. And Ray Raven Caldwell, Raven Caldwell was like, yo, man, what you doing? I'm like, man, we lost a game. He's like, man, we got another one next week. Right. <laughs> and then you realize, it's yeah. just like you, you have to forget it, and then you get right back into the mode to try yeah. to win the next week. And I wasn't accustomed to that in college yeah, and high school, yeah. but in the pros, it's like, you know, you keep moving on. And I learned to say people – will always challenge you like fans and things of that nature. But you don't have a good day at work every day neither. That's yeah. true. You know? Yeah. So. And when I don't have a good day at work, I don't get paid. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a big difference. In that area, like uh, uh, mid 80s, going into early 90s, whatever, I know there was like popular nightclubs here, like Chapter 3. Um, uh, Chapter there. 3. Well, did you guys ever go to any of those places to celebrate after the game? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I never did. Yeah. I went to I Chapter 3, did. I went to all yeah. of them, Ritz, all that I, stuff. What I remember is just being in Georgetown. I remember my mm -hmm. when I first laid my eyes on Georgetown and experienced that after a win, and I, and I saw across the street somebody larger than me, and I eyeballed him, he was eyeballing me, it was Patrick Ewing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and, and I'm like, okay, he at Georgetown, I'm with the Redskins commanders, and you know, and we kind of like walk past each other, you know. It's like, okay, I rep, you know, I got you. Did I he acknowledge you as Ben? He didn't acknowledge me. I didn't really acknowledge him either. Right. First of all, I'm not, not I'm not used to looking up to people. So <laughs> oh, I, I know, up I to do that know brother. that. I do. So <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't too cool with that. Right. But I knew that we both owned the town, you right. know, at the time. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah. okay, all right. And then they were out there doing their thing. I was supportive of him. I know he was supportive of us on the team. That year in particular, in 1983, this is the time I, when I saw him, uh, we were winning, uh, you know, we were going back to back. I know. I so remember. when I came to the team, it was Daryl Green and myself were first rounder and third rounder. We came on the team in 1983. And it was, I mean, we walked into, I walked into a locker room, like I was telling you earlier, with a lot of characters. Right. So the characters were still we want there. Names. We want names. Who are well, those well, characters? Well, John Riggins. Right. I mean, John Riggins Character. was starting to starting to be less of a public figure where Joe Gibbs, he would have, I mean, ulcers and stuff trying to manage John Riggins. How do I manage John? Did John Riggins Don't do manage John. Right. Yeah. Remember he, he told Sandy, uh, Sandra Day O'Connor, uh, you know, yeah, hey. Hey, Sandy, baby. Yeah, it's, it's all good. <laughs> oh, so he was, he was a trendsetter. Yeah. So he came out, he's wearing a cowboy hat. Oh, he was God. wearing shorts with cowboy boots. <laughs> he had, he was driving this, this truck that was just a man's truck. You know, it was, it was, and then they got, it put his name on it, Riggo and Riggo Rangers. That sounds like you got to, when you say a man's truck, you got to change your voice to like, the commercials like Toyota Tundra. Toyota Tundra. Yeah. Yeah, with 15, 15 <laughs> already got bass, so, so I don't have to change. Why are you so much. disrespectful to me? <laughs> Come I'm on, I'm a little you, dude. I'm, I'm a little giving dude. you I get fodder it. for right, this I, weekend. I, I, you I, gonna I, take that and run with it. I, I will. Yeah, so, I know so, you will. So it's, it's safe to say that Rick has probably had like a flask in the locker room before games. 
Mm, no, he it's, had he had a couple of things. He didn't have that. Right. Uh, but no, he he had his little five club. he they, had his little routine. Yes, right. yes. Yeah, and yeah. Rigo was like the head guy on the five o'clock club. Right. Yeah. How is he an offensive lineman? He's not. But he was called right. at the time the diesel. Yeah. Right. And so he uh, automatically was gifted into the five o'clock club and a part of the hogs. When you have your next guest, when you have uh, uh, Doc Walker, tell me how Doc was one of the hogs. As long as they can block. Tell me that. How <laughs> long as they can block. They can well, block. Doc wasn't blocking. Doc <laughs> was up here boyfriending me, trying to get me, hey, man. <laughs> Oh, Ease up, brother. That's Ease up. Yeah. Ease up, brother. Don't don't come on. You ain't making the team on me. See? I never was a gifted athlete or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I, and I do stand around. I was like, something has to happen to you, like when you really realize how old you are. And for me, it was like <laughs> about four years ago. I was in the backyard of a friend's house, and the kids brought an eight foot rim. Uh, no, it was a ten foot rim, and they brought it down to six feet. And they actually they said, "Oh, head, what you gonna do, right?" So I told him, I said, I'm going to I take tore that rim up. No, this is what I did. I said, that my explanation, I said, I'm going to throw it off the backboard. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to do a 360. Mm -hmm. And I'm cooking barbecue, so I got a rag right here, right? Yeah. I said, I'm going to grab the rag on the way down. I'm going to wipe my face. And y'all put that on TikTok, right? <laughs> Cut to, I took three steps. And pulled a hamstring. No, my patella. I no, took, oh, totally. Look, I, I blew it. Ooh. I took three steps. And all I remember hearing inside my body was, pow! I thought I was like, who in the hell drove all the way from the West Coast to shoot me in my kneecap? Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but the funniest part about it was it felt like a Spike Lee movie because I'm on the ground, all the kids are looking over top, and it was like, damn, we don't know what happened. He was only two inches off the ground. <laughs> What was that point? And I know we always want to live a yeah, useful life. Yeah, yeah. What was that point for you when you felt like uh, when you finally said to yourself, "I'm getting old." So for me, it was a plane flight. So I, I got let go by Norv Turner. So you don't ever bring a Dallas person in yeah. to uh, this organization or any organization if you, unless you want it sabotaged. Right. So anyway, I, long story shorter, I end up working out, getting myself in shape. I go work out for the Rams. I told the, my agent, I said, I will not play for anybody in our division. Cowboys, Eagles, uh-uh. Put me somewhere on the West Coast, whatever. So I, anyway, I go to the 49ers. By the way, we win a Super Bowl. Right, I know. Anyway. <laughs> so, and I. Did you, what, did I you almost have a, did you have a name ring. in a name moment? You had, <laughs> you had, you had a, did you call Norm? Did you, did you call Norm like this? Yeah, no, no I didn't want to play for somebody's division. I was looking to play for somebody's division. Right. I yeah. wanted to see it again. No, I, was just, I just wanted to get away from here. But, but on that flight to San Francisco, as I was flying, I aged. When I landed and came into your the- Your mind or your body? Mentally. Yeah. When I landed and came into that locker room at the 49ers, yeah. all of these guys, Tyrone Drakeford, just a bunch of guys that I had I had seen and, and they saw me and said, Mr. Man, Mr. They called me Mr. Man. That's my teammates <laughs> now. Said, let me tell you something. The way the Mr. Level, this is the level of disrespect. People find creative ways to call you old ass. Yes. Right? Yes. They start saying stuff like legend, goat, yes. OG. And yes. you're like, just, yes. just call me old. Yeah, thank you. Right. So they were doing, so that happened to me. And I'm like, he said, I saw your Swanson Hungry Man commercial. I did, I did, you were the, I was like, wait a minute. You spoke at my high school reunion. I'm like, please, no. How did that so, feel? Because back then, like. Made me feel old no, at that, 33. No, not that part. The part, like, with the, the corporate endorsement. Because, like, mm -hmm. nowadays, they have so many different companies, so many people sign with. Back then, to have a, like, that's when you were, I think, at the height of your career. Yes. When you had that swan set. But how did it yeah. feel when you got that gig? And what I that mean, gig? did it pay you more than it got paid on the field? No. It didn't? No. Now, now it then. would. No? Now yeah. it would, but it didn't it then. No, no yeah. it wasn't. We didn't get paid that much. But but I had, you know, I had a nice little gig, and this was a national commercial. Yeah. And they were playing off my name, Swanson Hungry Man. Oh, Hungry yeah, Man. Sure. man. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a natural for me. I was the first Swanson Hungry Man. Take it from this man. Hungry Man will satisfy your appetite too. 50% more meat, extra portions that taste extra good. I, I, I appreciate the diction. I appreciate the diction of that. And he did this to really punctuate that 60% more meat. All right, in a locker room. Why would you 100% meat? Every, I bless you. There's always, there, there's always uh, 
the funny person in the locker room. There's mm. always a person, the first person with the joke. Who is that person in a locker room Ooh. that you always was like, if something you had a bad play or something, you didn't want to look that person in the eyes because you knew they was about to dog you out or have a joke on you? Well, I don't know if it was in our day. I don't know early on, but later on in my career here, mm-hmm. Sterling mm-hmm. Palmer was the guy. Sterling, you know, Palmer. Sterling oh, he here, was funny. Sterling and, and Scott Galbert from oh, he okay. came from Dallas. Okay. okay. It was basically, you know, you and Dave. Just roasted roast every roast? day. Yeah. yeah. No matter yeah. what. They went from telling uh, Scotty had uh, freckles, and Sterling said he looked like he wiped his face with a mosquito. Rack. <laughs> Dang. Then Sterling had uh, gold, gold teeth. teeth. Uh, yes. And Scotty said he went to the Olympics and got his gold medal. He said, You from the hood? Look what you decide to do. <laughs> Melt you- it down for Lee Bob. <laughs> so it was like that type of stuff all right. the day. Uh, every day. I don't think Nor- Norm thought everybody was crazy at that time. Right. Because mm. those guys stretch. So we didn't yeah. have any personality, it, Brian? Bro. No, I'm saying during, during guys were serious. No, we we had guys that were different. Alvin mm-hmm. ha- uh, Walton, yeah, Alvin Walton, uh, Dirty Al, Alvin from Compton, Dirty Al would Alvin hit you. Play. Yeah, you know you his shoulders Alvin. were small. Yeah, but, but that was, Joker packed a butt, and yeah. he would when oh, he yeah. hit it, you, it was man. Awesome. You stiff on me, say, "Oh, you want stiff on? What, dude? It's football." That's what you Wait till I get to my car. I'm like, hold on. Wait till I get to my car. What the hell are you talking about? He gonna pull but something now, out on you. Dude, this is my dude. After a while, I, I became friends with a lot of the, the different guys. What is your relationship, especially now with you having your own um, radio show? What is the relationship right now? Do you all, do you ever like call out your old uh, old buddies that you hung out with and you played with? Call them like like say call them like for just to, just to, just start talking about yeah. yeah. I think like I said earlier, this, t- this the guys that I play with, we more like family than we are yes. just teammates. Yes, I'm still cool with like the the bulk of the guys that I play with. And on every team, you know, just like every family member, you got a family member that you don't really deal with. Right? Yeah, there's some people on the team you don't want to be around. Exactly. But like most of the guys, a lot of guys stay in the area. Yep. You know, they come on the show like Charles say. Every time we come on my show, I'm always playing golf somewhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's true. We still have a lot of guys that come around. I think that that team had a little bit of everything. Mm. Everybody knows uh, Joe Gibbs has been a big Christian, really mm-hmm. being devoted to God and everything. But even with that, sometimes people are tested. Was there ever a moment that you felt like mm. Joe Gibbs was about to curse everybody out of the yeah. locker room? Or did a shit or a f- ever slip up? I, nothing ever uh, slipped, and I know we were playing against the Eagles one yes. time. Yes. We were losing. Everybody remembers and that. And he one. came in, and he turned the table Took over. The, Look, the Gatorade thing, table. Only thing you oh, have yeah. at halftime is oranges and Gatorade. Right. And he just threw all that on the floor. And I'm like, and he said, like, gosh darn it. And, and I'm like, come on, coach, give me one. Give me give one. Me one. <laughs> Never slipped. No, he didn't. Never slipped. I, I just think one thing about him, what he said, he lived. Yes. And I think he also understood that you can't make everybody walk the same line. So he had guys like Dexter on the team. Yeah. Me. And, 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 and uh, you Alvin. weren't. You weren't. I was a little different. He was Brian, making me, he Brian, made me captain, and I wasn't there. No, let me, let me, I want to hear what he has to say. The difference with Brian, and I can think about this young Brian that came to our team in 1990. He just had attitude. He came in there with attitude. It's like he had a little bitty guy on his shoulder, and this guy was. But the you devil. can tell that the way he ran those. But we, we, no, I mean, we knew that. But I'm that's telling, a, against the other team. Okay. I'm telling you. Oh, in the locker room. I mean, he had attitude all the time. It was like he was trying to. And, and I'm saying it like he's not here, but it was like Brian was always trying to prove himself that, look, I'm legitimate. I deserve to be here. Now, over time, he proved all of that. But we felt, me, so, as, me, as, a, me as a fan, me as a slightly young guy, mm-hmm. with, like everything you said to describe him, we felt that way about him. That's why, like, for me. He, he, what he was thinking and feeling, you saw. He <laughs> wasn't hiding nothing. Every time you ran a point back, I could just, I just felt in your mind at the end of it, you was like, and what? That's what I'm telling you. I said exactly that. I'm yeah. telling you, that's the, that's yeah. the exact yeah. that I felt. But he was feeling that same kind of attitude with his own team. Right. So it was like he was insulated into his own Brian Mitchell mystique, and he was a part of a team, and he was still trying to prove himself to the world. And over time, he proved it. He never missed a game. He was there every week. But don't you he think just, that that's like what you said is what drove him to be as good as he was on the I'm, field? That's exactly right. I'm yeah. saying mm-hmm. I'm agreeing with you. But my point is that came off in the locker room like this brother was set aside, set apart. And he was, actually. Right. Uh, let me tell you an uh, Art Monk story. got to tell you an Art Monk story. Art Monk, we didn't have cell phones. 
I know cell phones are around. Have, this only week. the drug dealers, right? For evidence and no, all these guys No, no. They, they, they didn't even yeah. have cell phones. <laughs> there was no cell phones. But Art Monk was at George Mason University running the heels and running the track every single day at 9 a.m. Guess how you caught up with him? You actually had to show up and you could work out with him. Or you didn't show up and you didn't work out yeah. with him. Right. But he's going to be there every day. You didn't yeah. have to call him and verify and text and all that. No. The brother was there. I got to play with two of the greatest receivers ever to play the game. And, and Gary Clark will be on later, and, and Gary will attest to this. And Gary's right up there as well. But Art Monk and, and Jerry, Jerry Rice did the same thing. Those brothers were just disciplined. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And and I tell you, we had those kinds of characters. Who did? Okay, we talked. That's all the good stuff. I, we haven't talked about the No, characters. no, we talk about all the people with the discipline. Uh -huh. And this team seems you like a Christian group. You want to know some of the group. ones that don't? No, I'm saying this is like, you <laughs> see, like a Christian group. But, like, there had to be a character in the locker room. Mr. D. Who? You could call Next me the, Mr. Oh, yeah, Manly. Oh, yeah. I got I some. With I got some. I just you, heard a story. Oh, my God. You didn't play with Dexter? Nah. Dexter used to. Can I just show you? I don't even know if I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> Dexter had a stance that we fashionably, here's what happened. Let me tell you the story first. Okay. Russ Francis, he was a tight end for the 49ers. Okay. Joe Montana is coming back. So now, now they're communicating with us. We're getting ready to play them. I know we're getting ready to play them. So I'm not saying anything demonstrative that's going to be on the locker room wall. But Dexter does. Right. So Dexter said, I'm going to light him up and this and that and you know, I'm saying, hey, I'm gonna hit him like anybody else, but I'm not going after him. I respect the game and blah blah. And we always I'm saying knew that, all of that, but we knew that about you too. Well, I had to say that. <laughs> I know we knew it was just that like was this right one thing. end. You had the evil person. Then yeah. you had the one dude like knock you. I'm like, could I please so help let, you up? So let me <laughs> let me describe the play. So so on the first series, Dexter's in his stance, and Russ Francis uh, goes in motion past Dexter about 10 yards out beyond Dexter. Then he starts coming back, and then the play is snapped. Mm -hmm. And Dexter, all of this is wide open as Dexter's yeah. running up the field, get ready to, and Russ Francis lit him up, <laughs> yeah. hit him, and he don't see Russ Francis. He's looking at this off of the line, and Russ Francis is coming out of his blind spot. Right. I don't know if that's legal in these days, right. now, but back, back then, back yeah, they, they wasn't trying to run a play that, as much as they were trying to send a message to Dexter, and this was in the early part of the game. Right. After that, Dexter was in what we call the motorcycle stance. Uh -huh. So he was like this, and he was like this. <laughs> like he, he was like this. He wasn't rushing nobody. He had his kickstand down. He had his kickstand down, and we called that the motorcycle stance. Oh, and he was done for the game. Didn't play anymore. Oh, yeah. He he was looking like for Russ Francis. He was looking to see who coming at like, me. I'm looking out now. And I'm having the game of my life. Right. And Coach <laughs> always said, don't yeah. give them anything. Yeah. Don't give them nothing. Don't give them nothing. Let them get So that brother up. put his kickstand down. He's done. But yeah, we had, we had God. I mean, Alan Walton was a character. Yeah. Kelvin Bryant. Ray KB. Caldwell. I hung with these guys. That's why I say, like, characters hang with characters. I remember, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I like to indulge a little bit. And I was a coach was making me the character. Indulge. That's, you got to be clear with Drinks. that. Drinks. Okay, so <laughs> I was, I, he was okay. making me. He was making me the, the captain, my rookie season. Okay, first guy we made a rookie a captain, and I wasn't there. Remember, I was late for the meeting. Oh, oh man, <laughs> because right. the brother. Well, go ahead. Tell him. You just your story. I tell went him. out. Tell I him. went out. I hung out all this time at night, and I just overslept. Coach Gibbs I called me in his office, and he was like, "You don't ever want to get called in Coach Gibbs' office." And normally. You got called in there because he's going to reprimand you yeah. about something. But if you won the game the week before, you expected well, he, he not to get. He basically told me, depending on how I played, was how I was going to be fine. Needless, well, for, to say, for missing, needless to say, I did not get fine because I played my tail. See, that was a motivation yeah, right there. I you money. Go. I'm from Plaquemine, Louisiana. I didn't come here with a lot of money. I wasn't trying to give anybody any money back. Right. Amen. And Amen. I wasn't late for nothing. Me. I can tell you that. <laughs> back then, I know, back then, like, the hot cars were out. It was like people were driving Volkswagen, people were driving the 300 ZX, whatever. That's what I, I had. You had a 300 ZX? I had a 280Z. A 280Z? That's right. I, I came in 83. How did you fit in? And your head uh, was out of the drive? My I, head was out of the T-tops. So oh, yeah, I had I a little, yeah, I, I had a I high top. I came in a red 300 ZX. Did you? My yeah. rookie year. That was the definite DC. That was a definite That took all DC my money. Car. That was my signing bonus. What, the, the 300Z? Yeah. What color was it? 
gold. What this okay. with a bra on it and and it was armor all. You try to sit on there, you slide off. <laughs> <laughs> I washed the car like two or three times a day. Just I had all fly. kinds of time. Now I can't even get find a car wash. I'm too I, busy. Mean, I, I remember back then, like one of the like the, the best dates you could go on to take somebody it was when in Georgetown. Houston's. I don't know. Yeah, if you know, Houston's. Right. Them ribs, Houston, man. Houston, oh. Houston. <laughs> what did now? This is a very DC question. What does uh, mumbo sauce mean to you? Mumbo sauce, right uh, across at the uh, penthouse, across from uh, Howard. Do you have any chicken the wings, wings and sauce? mumbo no, sauce? No. That's a staple in DC. Mumbo it. sauce, it's good. Okay, yeah, you know I like cooking. So yeah, I was it, just gonna say. You need to talk to this brother. This brother got more pots and pans. <laughs> well, I get busy in the kitchen too, so I sound No, I, you I, don't I, get busy like this. First brother. off, that's disrespectful, all right? <laughs> first off, that's disrespectful. You haven't seen the picture. You haven't tasted the picture. I get this teamwork. I'm shocked up. about this brother. This brother came in cooking. Well, I, I mean, you could be shocked and, about and me. And pans and. I, you just My dad don't was a chef. I love me. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. What'd you say? My dad was a chef. Okay, I'll fall back. 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 Now, this brother, good right. you got to go over his house and eat. They, they. I mean, he got big pots. That, these are industrial pots and right. pans Party and stuff. Right. Yeah. If yeah. you were to make a flex meal for us right now, they open up the kitchen. If you were to make a flex meal right now, what would it be? Gumbo. I gumbo? Some gumbo. Louisiana. What, 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 wait, hold That's up. That's a lot of hold detail. Up. Interpret. Flex. flex. If you was trying to uh, like show you what oh, I got. Oh, flex. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, okay. Like, be, be, like, if you were trying <laughs> to make One of my impression. kids aren't here to, to uh, interpret for <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you were trying to make an impression, if you want to say. Okay. Gumbo. So you still cooking? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. You That's look at what the, Brian was known for. You remember when we used to be fed um, Kentucky Fried Chicken all and that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. all that? I mean, nowadays, these modern players now, we... Yeah. We would get they bought them us based. They bought us McDonald's, McDonald's, and, uh, and stuff like that. Bobby Mitchell was in charge of that. Rest his God, rest his soul. But he it was in charge of the food, <laughs> and the only time we we got Ermano, which is the Alpine restaurant that used to be oh, in Arlington, yeah. we get that on a Thursday. But that the rest of the enough. days, we were getting fried food. These yeah. guys. Only thing different about the modern day player. But you was eating fried food and you were winning too. Yeah, but the yeah. <laughs> the difference between the modern <laughs> player. It's, it, everybody likes to say they're bigger, stronger, and faster. They're not bigger. Ain't nobody bigger than Joe Jacoby and 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 yeah. uh, and, and Dave Butt at six strong, seven. Nobody's stronger, than, uh, nobody's stronger than Jumpy or or Mark Slaren. <laughs> yeah, nobody's faster than and that. nobody's faster than Daryl Green. So they ain't bigger, stronger, and faster. Let's get that straight. Right. What they do have is technology. Yeah. And the, if they utilize the technology now, man, I'd have my own private chef. I'd have a nutritionist. When you say technology, in, in, in what aspect? Like, I don't understand what you say. I'm that. saying they understand what the body. How, yeah, look, they don't, they Tom don't Brady much. looks better today than he did when he came out. They wear okay, the league. To tell them when they're getting overheated, when yeah. they all this different stuff, and they should. But like, I go back to Rocky. Rocky, Rocky trained Balboa. Barbarian. <laughs> Drago had all the technology. Yeah. Rocky still whipped. Yeah. That's, That's hard. hard. That's I hard. like that. I That's think hard. the That's old so school players. In their prime against the new school players, they've been through hell. Right, they'll yeah. get these guys a problem. Speaking of but there isn't any Brian Mitchells on the team now, is there? Is there a Brian Mitchell on the team now? I don't know. I don't. I don't go out to practice. I mean, there's there's the there, there's you know certain, there's the Chase Youngs I think, I think and the uh, McKissick and, plays the role a little he's bit. He's he slight on, though. He gets on he's slight, off, but he don't care. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh really? Okay. I like him. Okay. Speaking of the old school players and the new school players, like. Back then, like you, like you really couldn't tell who was the flashy guy, who was getting all the money. But now, like with the players coming out, first thing they do, they go get a big gold chain, they mm -hmm. get diamonds and stuff like that. With, with, with your team back then, like was there one one person locker room like, okay, this guy's showing off a little bit, he's about to lose all that, or he's too flashy, or who was the guy that was wearing like we the Mr. T flashy? chain, Mr. T chain? Because I know that was big back then. Was anybody that? Had well, this. I know D Boy got mad at me because I had I used to have rings and stuff. I, well, I did wear a necklace one time. I have a I have a seventy one pendant yeah, like, that like, I put away. I it's think just, the rumor was no. if you got that that silver NFL medallion, you more likely was gonna get cut. So nobody oh, really? got it. You know, <laughs> today everybody wears it. Yeah. You know, you see they come across the stage at the but that's that's what what society is today. Yeah. You that's know, right. yeah. I get this question a lot in my field of stand up comic, and I always get um. Uh, Young guys will come to me and they say, um, if you could give me one piece of advice, being a young mm. person in this business, what would it be? Hmm. I'll give you my answer to that, but if you could give the younger guys coming into mm -hmm. the league uh, one 
sound piece of advice, what would it be? It would be work hard. I mean, work hard. What happens is when you want something really bad and, you, and you're willing to work for it, once you get it, then people seem to back off and settle. I, I, I learned now, you know, looking back over my career, I had to work harder every year to maintain it. And the older you get, the harder it is to work. And so dropping a couple of pounds, doing all the extra stuff as you try to maintain that. So the point would be simply work hard. I, my son has a tattoo on his inside of his arm, which I tell him all the time. And I say, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. It's all about the finish. Well, people always say, when you get the big check, what was the biggest thing you, you think you, like, you splurged on when hmm. you felt like you had enough money to splurge? The, the, the biggest thing I think I splurged on, it was one thing for myself. I ended up buying me a Ferrari. I always wanted a Ferrari. And I got to a point I signed a $4.2 million contract. I wow. got me a Ferrari. What is that? $4.2 million. <laughs> I got wow. me a, three point, a Ferrari 355 Spider. And I was able to also build my mama house. You know, and, wow. And my dad had passed away after my second year. And I told, my, I, I told him before he passed away, I said, if something happened to you, I'm going to take care of my mom. And mm. I built my mom the house. She moves in. She say, but you told your daddy you was going to graduate. You didn't graduate yet. I'm like, well, damn. I could have just That's graduated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to save some money. But I went Do back, you want the house? Went Do you want the house? I got my degree. And I think all that stuff that I accumulated about money, to getting a degree and giving it to her and seeing a smile on her face. Mm. Thing that That's the best thing. Awesome. I appreciate Great it. Great answer. But I want to thank both of y'all. This is a first, uh, my first time doing this, man. And be able to sit down with two guys that I used to watch, get excited mm -hmm. about. And in those Sunday nights, I remember when you guys won the Super Bowl, I was in Georgetown and we was like, Which one? Um, uh, uh, Broncos. Okay. And I was like, just all we was talking trash. No way, L way. Yeah. We was like, yeah. we was like yeah. man yeah. up. We was talking so much yeah. trash. We was turning car. It was us. We was turning cars <laughs> over. And we were saying this. I and know they still told on themselves. They, they yeah, still yeah, looking at that guy. And I know. And we were saying uh, the song. It was the team formerly known as Hail to the Redskins. You can beep that part out. I'm Donnell Rollins. Charles, man, thank you for thank being you. here. Thanks for having Brian me. Mitchell, thank you for being too. here. And I am not that short. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get a phone. I got to get a phone. Thank you, man. Yeah. Yeah.